Guess who's back? So welcome back to a brand new year, guys. It's 2018. You know, a new year usually presents many different opportunities, and this year is no different. And I know I've been getting a lot of requests from some of you on my channel, by email. What's going on? Are you still doing videos? Are you gonna do the prediction video that we're all waiting for? Yes, I am going to be continuing to do videos and I'm going to be doing my signature predictions video for the Toronto real estate market in 2018. Uh, I'll spill the goods for you so you can better prepare yourself this year. See you on the other side, guys. Hey, what's up guys? It's been a long time. I apologize. I've been away. I've been sick. I've been on a family vacation. I'm sorry. How are you? How are the kids? How's the wife? She's not happy with you? We can talk about that some other time, okay? But forget about all that. Today we're going to be talking about the biggest predictions that I see happening for the Toronto real estate market in 2018. Obviously, Toronto has become somewhat of a spotlight city. Everyone around the world is talking about our real estate prices and what's happening in the marketplace. And as bad as it sounds that prices keep going up, I like the fact that it continues to keep branding us as a world-class city. In any city, not just Toronto, is driven by the real estate prices because it always makes people wonder, hmm, why is it so expensive there? Why do people want to live there? Why are they spending that much money to live in that city? Honestly, real estate is one of those primary drivers that actually makes a city world-class. They have to go hand in hand. So the big story is the rate increase that happened right off in January, right in the beginning of the year before people have even started looking for property. I personally don't think that that's a great strategy because it just spooks people unless that was the full intention. But the history of it was for the past seven years, there was no rate increases. Like there was just, there wasn't even a looming threat of it. And then in seven months between July of 2017 until January 2018, there's already been three rate increases. And the language suggests that they might actually even increase rates again. So that sort of set the tone early for what the market might look like for the rest of the year. So it'll be a little bit more tempered. Uh, I think it won't be as crazy as it was like because in 2017 when they started announcing the fair housing plan, you know, the crackdown on foreign investors and uh, you know, they started increasing rates like all those came as a shock. It came as a surprise. It kind of came out of nowhere, especially the fair housing plan and the crackdown. You know, it sort of shook the market a little bit, you know, and it it was a necessary shake. I'm not going to lie. It's what they had to do to sort of rein in the market. It just really, really sort of slowed the market down more than it needed to. And of course, I understand that regulators need to make decisions not just based on the real estate market, but the economy overall. Uh, but it, it obviously has a very, very strong impact on mortgage, lending, financing, and of course, the housing market. So what can we expect in 2018? Well, if you're a seller, you're gonna be in a bit of a bind, okay? It's gonna be a little bit challenging to sell your property, obviously, because it's harder for people to get mortgages. So not just first-time home buyers, but also people who don't have reported income, you know, uh, people who are, you know, cash rich, but don't have employment, you know, self-employment, entrepreneurs, like all across the board, it's getting harder to get a mortgage. So it's gonna be harder to close deals, obviously. I mean, I would expect the numbers to sort of hover around the same number of transactions by the end of the year. Uh, it could be slightly less, but overall, if you're a seller, you gotta be patient. You know, you can't be hoping and expecting the same prices that you thought you were gonna get last year, or definitely not the year before. So depending on what type of seller you are, uh, there's many different types, right? So there's ones out there that are just, you know, throwing their house on the market, they're testing it, which is gonna be essentially a, a waste of time. So please don't do that and don't torture your agents, please guys. But then for the ones that actually really need to sell, let's say they're leaving the country or they gotta move to a different house because they've run out of space, or if you're a downsizer, um, it's gonna be challenging. I mean, I think the demand is still going to be there, but everyone's a little bit hesitant right now and it's going to be harder to qualify on the mortgages and there might be more choice for them to choose from. So you're really going to have to grab that buyer and get them to put in an offer and get a deal done with your house instead of someone else's. So whether that's lowering prices or making your house look a lot more attractive or offering any type of incentive to get them to buy your house instead of someone else's. Everyone really likes to 
talk doom and gloom, right? Like it's, oh, the market's going down, it's terrible. Uh, but like any sort of down market or any sort of, you know, recession even, there's always opportunities that are there that you don't suspect. It's interesting how people like to talk about the market, especially in the media, where they like to sensationalize everything and, and like to generalize all across the market. This is simply not true for real estate, okay? So if you have people who are afraid to buy, you've also got people who are aggressive and ready to buy as well too. So there's always a silver lining in that story. Last year or the year before, it was a lot harder to buy property. You know, the lack of inventory, the tight supply, you know, meant that you would fail in buying property, right? Certainly it was easier to get a mortgage, but then now the reverse is it's harder to get a mortgage and there's going to be more properties out there. So overall, it's not a bad situation to be in where now you actually get to negotiate on the house that you actually really want. When the market was really, really tough and tight where you, you would fail and you'd just be tired. you just like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then you just end up settling for whatever house is out there. It's just the conditions and the environment actually really has an impact on how we think and how we approach our business. And so I want you guys to think very optimistically here. And especially if you're somebody who's upsizing from, for example, a condo to a house. Now, this is the, the prime sweet spot in the market, I think, in 2018. Because the demand for condos, you know, like one plus den or two bedrooms ranging from 700 to 1,000 square feet is going to be in really, really high demand, especially if it's in a good location with a well-managed building. So if you find yourself in that position and you're ready to buy a house, for example, in the GTA or in, or in some other beautiful neighborhood in Toronto, potentially could negotiate and get a good price on buying that house so it's a win over here and then with the demand being so strong for condos you could have a win over here so you'd be selling high and buying low there hasn't been that opportunity for quite a long time because before that condos were not really strong and houses were really strong so you know you were sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place but now you are the rock like it's an incredible opportunity if you're thinking of that type of transition for yourself so I call these the upsizers people who are buying not McDonald's fries but like you know they're buying the house that they want or they need it's a really good year for that and you definitely want to give me a call if that's what you're trying to do this year. I suspect that Toronto real estate will still probably continue to keep chugging along at around a 10 or 15 percent increase overall um, but I think that the average price is going to be somewhat underwhelming. And the reason for that is because people are gonna be buying smaller properties. So we're gonna have a lot of younger people who are just gonna say, you know what, a condo is good. I actually have clients and people that I know I'm working with where they're, they live in townhouses and they're, they're like, I'd rather live in a condo so that I don't have to deal with stairs. I'm having babies, got kids. It just makes my life a whole lot easier. You know, you'd be surprised at how important laundry is and having laundry on the same floor as your unit is to people. It is a really big decision, let me tell you. And then we're also starting to see a lot of um, older people who are downsizing, retiring, and preparing to live in sort of more transit-friendly nodes in the city. Like they wanna be close to buses, they wanna be close to subways. At some point, they're not gonna be able to drive anymore. Every two years or something, you need to uh, sort of reevaluate your testing, I think after 70 years old or something. I'm gonna double check that and I'll, and I'll put that in the links here. A lot of older people are really starting to think ahead. Now, I really wish they were thinking ahead two years ago so that there was more supply on the market, um, but we're having a lot of people that, um, you know, they just, it's time for them and they're not really trying to follow the market because they're trying to make decisions based on their own personal lifestyle. And so we might start to see a slightly bigger movement between the elderly people, so like your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, or even your parents who are looking to downsize into a condo now and they're finally ready. And the interesting thing about them is that they're not buying these small condos. They're buying a thousand square feet and up because they don't want their lifestyle to be affected as much. Like they want to have space and they want to have it all on one floor. And last but not least, but for investors, okay? Well, I like I mentioned before, there's a couple of segments in the market that I think are going to do incredibly well. Uh, I feel like the sweet spot, at least with within Toronto is condos and townhouses in the range of 600 to 800,000. In the more premium A1 locations, they were popping off last year already. And that's why we were seeing condos hitting $1,000 per square foot. But I think that effect is going to be even stronger this time around. And we'll probably see a lot more condos breaking off over that thousand per square foot mark because of younger people because of older people and investors jumping into the market now i suspect just like in 2017 we will start to see investors also 
coming out to market with some of their properties as well too. Maybe the ones that are that are more deep pocketed, they're going to hold on to their properties a little bit longer and wait for a better market to sell. But then there are ones who find themselves in difficult situations where they acquire too much property, it's hard to get financing, or they're low on cash and they just need to help out with other properties that are closing on pre-construction right now. So it's essential to find the right people who are ready to sell like the ones who are motivated and ready to sell. That's why you need to work with a really good agent who's gonna be able to find those types of properties for you so that you can negotiate and get a fantastic deal in 2018. Well, that's my predictions video, guys, and I hope that uh, it provided some insight into what you're thinking for the market. But if you need more specific advice, of course, you need to talk to me directly. You can contact me by email, text, or even with a phone call. But other than that, happy buying and selling. I wish you guys all the best. Hopefully, we'll be able to chat soon. Thanks a lot, and have yourself a great year. Take care. Bye for now, guys. The music in you one dance left this well is gonna pull through it hurts me on the inside to be not doing videos for you guys but I just been busy you know I had a family vacation I was actually a little bit sick and you might be able to hear it in my voice a little bit uh, it's actually deep in my voice uh, it's almost like I'm going through puberty a second time around uh,